Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Every single college football fan, you know, kind of has a team that they are higher than most on heading into a particular college football season. Now, for those who've been listening and rocking with the fellas the last couple of weeks and months, many of you guys know NC State's that team for me heading into 2024 and kind of how I came to that conclusion, if you will, is you look at this NC State team in 2023, they won nine football games with having some real problems on the offensive side of the football, not only from a schematic standpoint, but a little bit more from a personnel standpoint. I mean, Brendan Armstrong obviously did not work for NC State, but I think more importantly, you look at the offensive skill that was on NC State's team last year. If it wasn't Kevin Concepcion having the football in his hands, not a lot of good things were happening. I think NC State addressed that in a major way heading into 2024 and I kind of said this earlier in the summer. I look at NC State and say, is this the most talented team that Dave Dorn has had during his tenure at NC State? I think that answer very well could be yes. And we all know Dave Dorn, one of the best coaches in all of college football in terms of maximizing his talent. I think this NC State team can be extremely dangerous in 2024. I want to get into just a little bit of the depth chart. We've taken a look at this team, but – I think more importantly, take a look at the schedule and talk about how it shakes out for NC State. Fired up to get into it before we do it, as always. Just want to say thank you to you guys. It has been an absolute blast doing deep dives in all of these programs. The amount of support you guys continue to show, it truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. For the NC State fans, I would love if you guys kind of just threw some players out that I might be sleeping on Heading into 2024, I always learn a ton from you guys in the comments section. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. And without further ado, let's get into this one. I want to start with the quarterback position where you're bringing Grayson McCall. I think this is a massive addition. Now you go back to the winter months. Grayson McCall was one of those quarterbacks that I was kind of banging the table for a lot of different Power 4 programs to go after and get. I mean, you don't find quarterbacks that have thrown for over 10,000 yards with a 70% completion percentage. They don't grow on trees. Grayson McCall is one of those quarterbacks, and you look at the kind of offense that he is stepping into, he doesn't need to be a Heisman Trophy-level quarterback. He just needs to be the Grayson McCall that we saw at Coastal Carolina where he's getting the football out on time, he's making the good decisions, He's accurate with the football, one of the most accurate quarterbacks that we've seen over the last couple of years in college football. And why do I say that? It's because the talent around Grayson McCall is going to be significantly better than what we saw in 2023. Again, going back to the 2023 season, Kevin Concepcion was the team's leading rusher outside of quarterback Brendan Armstrong. He was also the team's leading receiver with the next leading receiver, not even going for over 250 yards. It was for lack of better terms, a disaster in terms of the offensive skill that was on NC State's team. You take a look at NC State in 2024, you bring back Kevin Concepcion going into year two, again, one of the more dynamic playmakers that we see in the whole entire ACC. You're bringing Noah Rogers coming from Ohio State, former top 100 national recruit. I mean, he would probably be the best wide receiver next to Kevin Concepcion last year. You have the Kari Collins. Wesley Grimes coming over from Wake Forest. You have two really fascinating true freshmen coming in, Terrell Anderson and Jonathan Paler. You know, that's right. You go out and get Justin Jolly from UConn, who is just this matchup nightmare difference maker as this kind of tight end hybrid wide receiver who there's just not that many defensive backs that have the physical traits to deal with the size and athleticism that Justin Jolie has. And so I look at this NC State offense and say it is so much more talented at the skill position. Then you look at the running back spot. Jordan Waters, by far the best running back that would have been on this NC State team last year. You're bringing Hollywood Smothers from Oklahoma, a kid that I love coming out of high school. The running back room, significantly better. The pass catcher room, significantly better. Then you look at the offensive line and say, this is exactly how Dave Doran wants it. A lot of graduates, a lot of redshirt seniors. You're bringing Zeke Carell from Notre Dame. It's a offensive line that one, I think is going to be really dang good. It's experienced, but I think the continuity is a massive state, uh, massive kind of conversation too, where you look at so many other offensive lines in this modern era of college football, where 
it's kind of a revolving door. You get new faces in, new faces out. You look at NC State outside of plugging in Z Carell, who's played a ton of football at Notre Dame. This is an NC State offensive line that's played a lot of football together over the last couple of years. So you look at the offensive line and say, we feel pretty good. You're bringing Grayson McCall. You say the talent around Grayson McCall is significantly better. I think this NC State offense takes, you know, one of the bigger steps in the right direction that you'll see across the country. Then you take a look at the defense and say, yes, you lose someone like Peyton Wilson, who was uh, truly one of the better linebackers I've seen at the college football level in a couple of years. Uh, He was truly special to NC State. They relied on him in a lot of different situations, whether it was rushing the passer, whether it was kind of just being that field general for NC State. My take on NC State is one, I think the secondary – is really, really freaking good, right? You have Aiden White, one of the best cornerbacks, not only in the ACC, but in the country. You're bringing Donovan Kaufman and Jahai Carter through the portal, two guys that have played a lot of football at a high level. I look at NC State's secondary and say, there's a lot to like. You're really the only question mark I think I have is within that front seven, who can be the guy that can kind of wreck some games up front? I think you bring it back, Devin Van, who is probably the most talented defensive lineman on NC State's team. Brandon Cleveland's a guy that's getting a lot of buzz heading into his junior year. If he can be kind of like McNeil was a couple of years ago for NC State, that true fire hydrant at that nose tackle position that also can make a lot of plays, that's a massive storyline for NC State. So if you can figure out how to replace Peyton Wilson, which there's no replacing singular Peyton Wilson, but you can replace him kind of as a committee with just a bunch of guys stepping up, you look at this NC State defense and say, you feel pretty good about the unit heading into the 2024 season. I say this all the time at the end of the day, Dave Doran, Tony Gibson, I just trust this NC State defense to be an above average defense in the ACC, if not one of the better defenses in the ACC. So you take a a NC State team last year that won nine football games, with dreadful offensive play, you completely revamp the offense, and then you hold serve on defense. This is an NC State team that can compete for an ACC championship in the 2024 season. Now, you take a look at the schedule. It's a hard first four weeks, and then it gets very easy for NC State, right? Western Carolina, that one should be a win. You play Tennessee, neutral site, Bank of America Stadium. Now, I'm not necessarily picking NC State to win that football game, That being said, there's a lot of reason to believe that NC State has a chance, right? You have a very young quarterback, talented quarterback, but young quarterback with Nico coming in for Tennessee. You have a veteran quarterback yourself with NC State, and that's going to be a a battle. I think we're going to find out a lot about that NC State team during week two. You play Louisiana Tech at home should be a win. You go on the road to Clemson. You probably favor Clemson at home in that matchup after that game there's not a game that I'm picking NC State to lose. So you're looking at an NC State team that finishes the 2024 season with only one loss in conference play, potentially being 10-2 and two going to an ACC championship. This is an NC State team that could find themselves in that kind of playoff conversation come November. I am a believer in NC State. You continue to scroll down the schedule, and we'll take a deeper dive into the Tennessee game, into the Clemson game when that time comes. Again, I think you look at Tennessee and say you feel good about Grayson McCall. You look at the Clemson game and say you feel good about Grayson McCall versus K. Klubnick. So from just a pure quarterback matchup standpoint, you're not playing any elite quarterbacks on either of those teams. Nico could certainly be elite. K. Klubnick could take a step in the right direction. Then NIU, Wake Forest, Syracuse, you go on the road to Cal before the bye week. That could be a little bit tricky just because of the travel across the country. That being said, I feel pretty good about NC State playing to their potential and beating a Cal team. You get Stanford at home. They got to go across the country to play you. Duke at home. You go on the road to Georgia Tech, on the road to UNC to finish up. I look at this schedule and say after that Tennessee and Clemson games, there's not a game that I'm looking at and saying NC State won't be the favorite in. And we know NC State. They play to their potential. That's rarely a team that is favored to win a football game and doesn't when all things are firing on the right direction. I look at I look at the NC State program and say, you got a lot of boxes checked heading into 2024. I think it's the most talented NC State team we've seen with Dave Doran. Expect them to be in that ACC championship conversation and potentially 
kind of one of those dark horse teams to make the college football playoffs, not a team that I'm higher on than NC State heading into 2024. We'll cut it there. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Again, if you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.